Okay, so now we're going to start uh, another, the next section, which is 2.2. We're going to talk about di diagonalizability. Okay, and this, um, this universe here that we're going to go over, um, we're going to talk about a couple of things because in the previous uh, lecture videos, um, we showed that all those similar matrices are necessarily are uh, matrix equivalent, the converse does not hold. Some matrix equivalent classes break into two or more um, um, similarity classes. You know, for instance, the non-singular two by two matrices form one matrix equivalent class, but more than one similarity class. Okay. Um, this diagram on the board, uh, the solid curves show the matrix equivalent classes, but then the dashed lines show the similarity classes. Um, just, just as an, you know, something, to, a visual. Okay. Each star is a matrix uh, representing its similarity class. Um, we cannot use the canonical form for matrix equivalence, uh, a block partial identity matrix as a uh, canonical form for similarity because each matrix equivalence class is only one partial identity matrix. Okay. Um, and then of course this goes on because there's an infinite number of equivalence classes, uh, matrix equivalence classes um, that we can consider. Okay. Now to develop a canonical form for representatives of the similarity classes, we naturally build off of previous work. Um, so if a similarity class does not contain a partial identity matrix, then it should represent um, that class. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. If, if, the, if a similarity class does contain a partial identity matrix, then it should represent that class. Now, beyond that, representatives should be as simple as possible. Um, the simplest extension of the partial identity form is diagonal form. So that's what, hence the, uh, the, title, uh, the title of the top, uh, section, subsection that we're dealing with. So we're going to introduce the definition and then we're going to go from there.